Hello guys, welcome to another FU Money. Uh, today we are going to talk a bit about the price to time model. Uh, I've been working on it and I have something I want to show you. Then we are going to uh, analyze the price action on, on, on Bitcoin and see what's been happening since uh, yesterday. Um, and that's about it today. So let's go to let's go to share the screen. Okay, so let's start with the price to time model today, and I would like to show you guys something I've been working on. Uh, this is just uh, I've been just playing with the charts, and uh, it's nothing. It's nothing really, you know, definitive, uh, definitive or. Um, it's not for sure. So, um, so uh, what we have here is the price to time model. It's a bit different from what you've been seeing before because uh, uh, before you were used to see only the three halvenings. Uh, that happened already with this uh, kind of forecast here. Um, we have um, I've been I've been working on this model to try to try to forecast. Of course, no model is 100% accurate, or it means that everything is going to happen exactly as the model shows you. But at least to try to forecast where we are going to top uh, date-wise and price-wise. So. Basically, this model tries to uh, forecast the date where the top will probably occur and also the price that Bitcoin will have by that date. Uh, however, however, today the price to time model looks a bit different because we have a blue area here on the right. And this has been uh, something I've been playing with uh, for a few days and i i just want to show you guys what happened when i tried to do something that was in my mind and it's a uh, really basic stuff so what i did here was i tried to emulate what's going to happen in the future if the same conditions apply to what happened in the past so what i did was i um focused myself on this area here of the price to time model because this area you know the cycle is complete so you have access to all the points all the data points you need uh, basically the top price the date where that top price occurred and also uh, you know the complete bear market and the bull run that we had afterwards until the top so I did not use any of these data points here or the price action here for my, uh, you know, little play on the blue side because this one is not complete yet. We don't know where the top will be. We don't know if the date is accurate. So basically I use this one because this one is complete. So what I did was I just mirrored uh, exactly the same number of bars or candles uh, from this halvening. Um, I did exactly the same measures here on this uh, on this uh, side. So as you can see, the square, the square number one and number two have both 77 uh, weekly candles wide uh, or length, depends on how we want to see it. Um, and then after I was playing with this and trying to find the data points exactly as that one. So basically I tried to measure the square to touch the top dashed line that touches all, all the tops that we have been having so far. At least we have only two points for now, but I hope the third one will come this year. And then we can really prove that this dashed line here will uh, be completely valid because after three touching points of the top price, I will consider this dashed line valid and very, uh, you know, important for the calculations of this model. Uh, so far, it's not yet confirmed. As you know, only two. When you have only two points, it's not. It's not really uh, proved that the dashed line is work uh, will work as a prediction tool. 
but when you have the third touching point then probably if this becomes the top then i will i will say that this line is relevant to the forecast of the top prices so i just measured all the squares i also included uh, this was not here i also included the number of weekly candles that each square uh, has as uh, uh, width and um, so now you have more information you don't need to be you know counting candles just trying to find the bottom and then counting them and do the same for the other square so you have the numbers here and then i've uh, drawn this blue replica of the second halvening that is here also the the exponential uh, curved line which i consider the limit for a healthy and sustainable price action to rise to the top is here uh, so basically you have exactly the same so what i did after that just as a, as i was playing with the chart i also mirrored the complete price action of bitcoin from this top to that top and i'm going to do it now for you guys to see what happens it's uh, for me it's a very funny coincidence but let me show you guys so i have to be really accurate here so i'm going to mirror this price action to the last candle inside the square here so this gives me an exact replica of the price action, which I can then use, drag, and put it in exactly the same position as it was here in the real price action that happened uh, from December 2013 until uh, in December 2017. So basically, I'm going to just try to check here what's the difference for that outside candle relatively to the top of the square so it's just a few millimeters here so i'm just going to try to put this also at the same position uh trying to you know like if the price was uh, i'm assuming i'm assuming at this moment that the top price will be exactly around here like the two previous hovenings and i'm just moving this one candle to the left that's exactly right and now we have basically the same distance here and look what just happened i know this is just you know playing with the charts and it's nothing uh, really scientific about it but, but there's nothing really scientific about it but it's really a nice coincidence that when you try to forecast the price of bitcoin from the possible or probable next stop and if you use the data points from this halvening here which is the last one we have complete from the bear market to the bull market you know what happens is this it's exactly it touches exactly on the dashed line so if we consider this like an average price action for each cycle um it it you know it's funny that uh, it goes exactly to the top right uh, corner of the square it touches the dashed line and basically this is uh, you know just I'm, I'm 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 just playing with the charts but it's funny how the coincidence happened and and it's exactly you know i calculated the so uh, this is the halving that is going to happen on the 6th of may of 2024 by the way so it's also in blue because it didn't happen yet but then i used the same exact uh, numbers for the squares uh, from that halvening and the price the complete cycle of the price action and it touches exactly the point of the dashed line as we have it before so this could be like just you know just uh, um, some kind of uh, uh, play chart just to try to forecast what's the price of bitcoin in, in the future but if this becomes reality uh, that would be very nice to know that around the end of october of 2025 bitcoin could probably have a price of four million and six hundred thousand dollars for each bitcoin well this is just you know 
this was just uh, um, me playing with the charts, but it's it's funny how when you replicate the data, uh, you get to the point, exact point where the dashed line has been, you know, going up. This is a logarithmic chart, by the way, so it uh, it uh, accounts for the exponentiality of the price rising uh, from the previous halvings. So I was just uh, trying to, you know, I was just um, wanting to show you guys this. And I will leave it there just for fun. Let's see what happens in these next coming years. Let's see if the price actually behaves something like that or not. And if we have some kind of deviations, maybe we can just account for it and uh, try to correct a bit the, the price uh, action here in the forecast. Maybe we can reach some kind of approximate price and date for the next halving after, uh, in 2024. Okay, so I just wanted to show you this. Uh, by the way, also another curious uh, thing. Uh, if you notice, uh, one, of the, one of the points where the previous bear market had its uh, bottom was a really nice support line um, that if you, if you check it here, so it was also a very interesting support for this correction, this correction here. So let me just zoom in a bit so you can see. So basically this, you know, it's the bottom of the previous bear market we had. And if you go back in time, you see in the white dashed line that we have here a very nice support exactly on the same line that supported the bear market of 2018 and 19. Um, it was also resistance when Bitcoin was going up around here and then it became support for this correction and it became support for this bottom. So if you go back, we can actually say that if the same happens in this forecast here in blue, we are already at the price uh, level that will be like the support line for the next bear market which would give us uh, 52,500 uh, uh, dollars for the next uh, you know bottom if actually the correction of the next bear market is similar or at least looks like the same as the ones before so this was just a uh, a quick update on the price to time model. So let's go to the charts and check what's happening with Bitcoin. So the first one, let's check the MRI uh, strategy. So the monthly chart hasn't changed that much since yesterday or since two days ago when I had my last video uh, uploaded to YouTube. Uh, it still looks uh, bullish to me. We are only on a third uh, candle of nine green candles in the MRI. We have the, in the previous month, we have a star, a buy signal for Bitcoin. So I hope I'm, I'm the only thing I said in my previous video was uh, this, this chart looks extremely extended to the upside. So uh, some kind of correction not just the one we are seeing right now currently with this uh, 55 53 thousand uh, dollars correction that we saw in the last two days but i'm expecting some kind of bigger correction in the future not so distant future but let's see what happens so the monthly chart is bullish so let's go to the weekly chart so this is the kind of chart i would like to see in the monthly chart, uh, some corrections showing some red candles showing that the price is retracing as we go up, which makes the price action much more sustainable and healthy. Uh, what we are looking here now this week is some retracement. Uh, we have an A extension of the MRI, which is also coinciding with the first you know the top no the first sorry the first the first bearish candle of nine so this could be in the daily we are just going to check the daily chart after this this could be 
the one to four candle correction that we were expecting in the daily chart but this chart looks beautiful this chart for me it's very very bullish uh, it's very healthy the price action is healthy we have the moving averages trying to catch the price the price haven't ha hasn't touched the the 20 period moving average which would be a really bad sign if we cross to the downside uh, this was the indication of the bear market started starting in 2018 was when the price action crossed this moving average to the downside so let's quickly go to the daily chart okay so in the daily chart we are retracing so we had an MRI top uh, tone vase was really on the spot when he said that this candle would um, give us a retracement I also uh, a few days ago I also called this top here and I said that I was shorting Bitcoin just for the you know the short term uh, trying to get some money here to be able to buy more Bitcoin and accumulate I was a bit criticized for that because I was shorting Bitcoin but anyway as a trader I have to make money so I already explained that to you guys um, we have a star here which is a sell signal uh, that this uh, third candle didn't uh, touch the moving average yet so I'm expecting probably I'm expecting a bit more of downside at least between today tomorrow uh, one two days max and probably this moving average will uh, support the price if not if we have uh, a bigger correction would we, which would be very healthy by the way to Bitcoin instead of people thinking that a bigger correction would be really bearish signal um, I don't think so I think that if Bitcoin goes back and retraces to the second moving average which is the 50 period moving average here in yellow I believe this would be a very nice retracement very healthy we could find support here around this price line which would be around the 50 51 maybe if we go there tomorrow the yellow line would be much um extended much more extended here so to the 50,000 51,000 price level and probably the candle could have some kind of extended week and then just you know go back to the upside and restart a new uptrend cycle so i believe this would be much more healthy than just going straight up from here and again crossing the price to time model which i can show you guys again the price to time model is telling me that as you can see here we had uh, again a crossover to the upper side of the exponential curve that provoked again for the third time uh, this correction here which i believe is not enough so i think we should stay at least one two more weeks below the exponential curve line and then you know going back up and keep the price action sustainable and healthy all the way below the line to the top that would be very nice and the corrections would be much more light lighter corrections not something like 50 percent but maybe 15 20 to 25 percent max if we stay below this line so going back going back to the chart here the mri chart the daily uh, so this is the chart that i believe should you know this is the chart where you can actually see where the price would be very healthy if it touches the yellow line then going back up again and ending this correction by tomorrow by the end of day maximum you know thursday maybe so that's my even actually actually if you look at the oscillators the rsi is coming back down the macd is crossing over you know the blue line is crossing the red line so this is a bearish signal too um the funding rate in bitmax is really approaching zero we are very close to zero right now but this is the daily so i have to check the funding rate on the hourly which is much more accurate and the distance from <coughs> let me just open here so the fisher distance from the ema uh, is still going down 
the blue line is below the red line we are trying to approach the center of this oscillator so i would say that this is not over i i would say that the probability of this uh, retracement to continue a bit more to the downside is still very probable and uh, let's see what happens uh, but for me as as you know as a uh, as my personal decision i will not go long yet maybe we can have a bit more downside so let's see what happens let's uh, let's take a look at the 4 hour chart so the 4 hour chart is in no land you, you know no man land and uh, there's nothing here between the yellow and the red moving averages um we are just ranging you know sideways it's not very useful for now uh the oscillator down here is uh, turning back up the also the funding rate on the four hour which is still not very accurate i i will check the next one in the one hour but it's you know it's coming down again which is uh, it's uh, it's a bullish sign um the macd the macd is turning is trying to stop this you know on the four hour we are maybe becoming bullish a bit bullish but we still don't have any signs that we are going up until at least we pass the 56k price line which would be the yellow moving average here the 50 period so until then i i would not say that we are already over with this retracement i'm i bet we are still going to have a bit more of downside probably to the 52k area that's very possible in my opinion so let's go quickly to the one hour so in the one hour Mm -hmm. in the one hour we are again having some downside force here uh, the bullish signal of the funding rate is not so going down as i expected so we are still around around 0 0.04 uh, which is a very good, you know, for uh, for the bullish case, this is a good uh, a good number. However, if you really want to go up quickly, this this funding rate should be closer to zero. Also, the RSI is turning back down. So the one hour, you know, it doesn't tell you much, but it does tell you that we have hit this resistance area around 56k twice already and we have been rejected twice so this is an important actually i'm going to draw a line here because this is becoming a very important resistant and resistance and support level so let me just draw the line around 56 here uh, okay let me just use the coordinates uh -huh. okay let me just let me just put it on 56 even here and you can see as this this line is becoming very relevant to the price action not just in the one hour but also the previous uh, charts um, we touched this line twice already here and here uh, recently the price was rejected and we are going back to the downside here all this area was support until it was broken uh, and also here this has been support in this area before we went for the previous all-time high so what i can say is that the 56k line is uh, 56k price line is very important at this moment this is a very uh, relevant to the price action if we can break 56k now um, before going a bit more to the downside then this is in the short term uh, bullish 
However, however, we have the 50 period moving average already coming down and this could also be another area of resistance as you can also see here. This was also resistance when the price was trying to go up in this area. So I would say the 57, 57 to 58 is also a resistance to the price at the moment. Okay, let's just go back to the for one one day chart here the daily chart let's see where this line takes us yeah exactly so this line was also the 56k line was also the resistance for the previous all-time high which took uh took bitcoin price to 43k in this big retracement here so i would say the 56k is very relevant for now if we cannot cross it to the upside probably we will have a bit more of downside okay for the mri i think we are done let's uh, go to the pro indicators strategy here so what's happening as you can see the indicator draw this um, plotted this uh, you know pink pinkish reddish line here before the top was reached um, it predicted exactly the the point or the area where we would top for a thir third range boundary which is still not confirmed because of the recent price action being uh, you know the time is not enough uh, and the area has to be crossed is this middle of the context channel which is the blue line let me just zoom a bit in for you to see it so you see this red candle here touched exactly the the blue line which means the exact medium point of the context channel which is this uh, gray area on the bottom and on the top um, this was not sufficient for the third range boundary to be confirmed i guess we need a bit more time uh, or we need a big um, you know reversal to the upside just to confirm this point here also and then the third range boundary will be confirmed um, so what i was expecting was a bit more of downside and let's check with the fibonacci's where are my areas of interest so you know i have a special configuration for the fibonacci's which give me immediately my areas of interest which you can also do you can change the colors to look like this so what is happening as as i said before when i was uh, showing you guys the mri strategy is that this is exactly the middle point between the green and the red areas of the fibonacci levels so this is the dumb zone as i like to call it this is where uh, you know you can never um, be sure or at least have a probability a higher degree of probabilities that the price will go either way uh, so to you know to entry the market here or exit the market here is just gambling with your money because you don't know for sure this is like a 50 50 chance of going up or going down that's why I call it a dumb zone and you should never trade inside this middle area here between the red and the green. So my areas of interest, really, really good speculative areas would be here, you know, entering the red area. So if the price goes here, for example, to the bottom context, and it goes to so let me check here 46 this is a bit too much considering the third range boundary is a bit more to the upper side so this would be one of my areas of interest not so down here but there another one would be around let me check 52 so this would be my first area of interest 52 to 50 around those uh, levels 
And then a really nice area of interest if you want to go long would be the 48 to 46. So if the price action continues to retrace a bit more to the downside, I would have a really good interest area. So if you, if you, if you extend this box to the left, you will see that it's exactly one of the support areas of the price, as you can see here. So this would be one nice area of interest for me to buy and go long. Another one for sure here, if we don't break all the supports and the second range boundary price level and we go down to really lower levels. So that's it. I guess um, for today we've been a, a little uh, extended in time for this video already. Uh, let me just uh, stop the uh, screen share here. I have a note here from one of the, uh, from one of the followers of this channel uh, about uh, taking um, about how do I manage my shorts and longs in terms of the of the uh, take profit. Uh, let me just check. Yeah, stop losses. Uh, I have the note here, so it's not it's not. I'm not joking. I took notes from the previous comments on the on the video before this one. So someone asked me to do something. I took the note. I know that I should have been doing that already, but today the video is already very long. Uh, we are already with uh, around 30 minutes of video. So I took the note. I promise that I will uh, try to show it in the next video. And don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe the channel if you haven't subscribed yet and just share it with your friends and let's grow the community. I hope you enjoyed this uh, analysis of today and you, and you uh, think of it as a quality content and you see um, you will be back in the next video. So until then, bye.